Thursday morning. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Now, some disturbing news came through late last night, and of course, it spilled into this morning. And very disturbing news, and it could cause a major embarrassment to Edo State and to Nigeria. Now, instead of 12 days, the National Sports Festival will end after seven days over the failure of the federal government to release funds. Now, the coordinator of Media and Publicity National Sports Festival, Ebonyana Musa, now, in a statement on Wednesday night, he confirmed that the decision was taken after an emergency meeting of the local organizing committee headed by Edo State's governor, Deputy Governor Philip Schwaibel. Let me read the communicate to you that was sent last night. The local organizing committee, Edo 2020, regrets to announce that it will end the games abruptly tomorrow, that's today, at 12 noon, for lack of funds. Now, rising from an emergency meeting this evening, that was yesterday evening, the LOC says it has to take this hard decision due to lack of funds having expended its reserves to kickstart the games. Regrettably, the FG is yet to redeem its pledge to support us as the host state financially for the cost of postponement, so we are left with no option than to end the games at noon tomorrow, that's today. Signed by Ebohiana Musa, Project Manager, Media and Communications, Edo 2020. Joining us, Muda Shiru Shitsu, Sports Analyst, live from Edo. Good morning, Muda. Uh, good morning, Wally Scott. The disturbing news is very disturbing, I can assure you. But what's your take on this one? You are in Edo. What's happening there? Yes, um, let me give you the latest update as regards to whether the sport festival will be shot or not. Please do. The sport um, letter update is from, which is a press release from um, Raymond Balogu, the assistant director of press, okay. Ministry of Youth and Sports. Mm. And the title of the press release is National Sport Festival in Guinea Continues. Okay. So the main fact is that uh, the Ministry of Youth and Sport has clarified that the 20th National Sports Festival in 2020 is going on as planned, with competitions going on as scheduled. And the second paragraph of that statement means that the Ministry and the main organizing committee for the festival are unaware of any plans or threats by the Edo State government to shut down the sports festival as there have been no official meeting or communication that relates such information. So right now, there's, uh, the latest update is that um, the sports festival continues. And uh, if you can hear from the background, I'm very close to where they're having the main singles final going on right now between Farah State and Edo State. So I think with that, the sports festival still goes on until there's any further information or a meeting from both sides. But what I could denote from both statements by Musa, who is the project manager of LOC, and also from the MOC, is that the paper issued yesterday, there have not been any meeting between the Southern Ministry of Sports and Edo State government on this issue. And also the statement released right now for which was signed by Raymond Balogo is that there have been any meetings from both sides. So we hope that both sides, the MOC, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports, and the LOC will have a meeting as regards to that. Now, Mudashiro, there's a problem. How do you organize an event and there's no synergy, there's no communication between, between the two parties? Now, obviously, Edo State government, the LOC and the ministry were not communicating before these communiques were released. If I want to talk politically, I think the um, LOC and um, the LOC that Edo State government wants to ensure that the promise being made by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports, in by and large, the federal government, that they will support financially this um, sports festival that is going on. So I think the best, for my own analogy, is that I don't think government wants to ensure that the promise being made by the federal government 
is, is, um, is, is ensure that they pay the money because they have to make sure that um, the opening ceremony took place first. And we have the president being represented by the Minister of Youth and Sports. And there has not been any measure from the federal government on whether they're giving out the money. So this is just to make sure or a device by the federal government, by the LOC, to make sure that the sports ministry pay their own part in to ensure a very I like, good... Um, I like your diplomacy, Muda. I, li I love your diplomacy this morning. It's very nice. However, let me tell you what the guys, the journalists in Lagos and across Nigeria are saying. And they are not diplomatic. They are saying that the Edo State government is trying to hold the federal government on the juggler. Basically blackmail them so the money can come out quickly. Whatever um, adjective we want to use you to qualify yeah. yeah. <laughs> what Edo State government is. The summary is that they want to ensure that the statement made earlier by the federal government is ensured. So whatever way they may go about it, I think the only aim is to ensure that um, the federal government pays pay the money it. quickly. So by yes. threatening by threatening to stop the gifts, of course the government will sit up and quickly pay the money naturally. It's called holding yeah, them on juggler. Yeah, but <laughs> if it is, I'm going to read what the second paragraph is that the honorable minister, permanent secretary, and director are on ground in Philippi, where the Senegal is holding. And it is expected that the state government would formally invite the ministry for a meeting, should any urgency exist, and sound the National Sports Festival or communication effectively with the main organizing committee, like you rightly said. So I think it's just um, a quick one. A fear from the LOC to make sure, or maybe they go around somewhere that um, they might not be paying them, or to make, to make sure that they get money. That is why they did that. But meanwhile, all these bodies the Royal Minister, the Permanent Secretary, the Director, all of them are still in a door. So, whatever the reason why the Edo State Government decided to do that. Well, I don't understand. But okay, the bottom no. line is that it's for, the, it's for the financial support that the federal government promised them. Okay, let's come to this now, Muda. Who goes to battle without your weapons? Who goes to battle with guns without bullets? Why did the Edo state itself start this festival without getting their funds from the government before starting? Why wait to start first? Why were they rushing to start before getting their monies first? Okay, and this answer to your questions is going to come from the last paragraph of the statement issued today. And this is what the last paragraph, which is signed by Raymond Balogu, Assistant Director Press, Ministry of Youth and Sport, and the date as today's date. The last paragraph says, for the record, the assumption government due to the cost implication of the postponement occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic requested financial assistance from the federal government through the Ministry of Youth and Sport Development. The ministry has since been at work to ensure the financial assistance which is believed to be, to be in process. The federal Ministry of Youth and Sport, the adult government are determined to deliver a successful national sports festival. Okay, now, 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 Muda, let's look at this. Um, let's leave um, the postponements and holding governments on the juggler. Let's leave all that out. Based on your work as a journalist in the past few years, how would you look at the quality, technically, of the athletes in, 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 at the festival now and how well are things being done? Yes, um, when we talk about technicalities, we, we, um, it's a goal that um, all these athletes have the best of the best of um, coaches and technical advisors from the state. So the technicality of it now depends on where the state coach is coming from. But nevertheless, we know that uh, there's the record breaking in this festival. And well, that also shows our technical, technical support some of these um, states uh, state are. But let me also remind you 
that um, we have games going on. And um, right now is the final of the men's court between Edo State and um, Para State. The defending champion in Abuja 2018, Lale Abdurrahman, who was who he was supporting, who was representing Lakers State when he won the medal, gold medal in 2018, uh, joined Edo State. But fortunately, he was knocked out of um, the semi-final stage. Hopefully, he gets the bronze medal. Also, we know that, um, also in squash, Shepiso Latunji, who also, with uh, Larry Raman, left um, Labor State in Abuja 2018. She won a gold medal yesterday. So, when it was, she defended her title in um, Abuja properly. So, she just won yesterday. So, there will be a final today. But let me now take you to cycling, where I just said one goal in both the male and the female category in the 200 sprints. So I think, in looking at the end of the table, as I see yesterday, which does not show the official, which is an official medal table, but so many sports events are taking place since then. We have Delta State with 15 gold, 7 silver, and 4 bronze. A total of 26 medal. We have Bayesa with up on the second position with your gold, six silver and four bronze medal. We have a gold state on uh, the third position with three gold medal, eleven silver and eleven bronze. But let me let you know that this result is official result as that yesterday, nice, seven oh okay. seven p.m. Okay. So this is an updated version of this result. Okay, Muda, before we go to my next um, question, my next topic today, um, give it to Edo State. They are bringing in people who actually want to be part of it. Look at the former big brother, Niger housemate. He wants to um, compete for River State, I think long jump or high jump. We also know an elite athlete, Essay Brume, is around to compete for Delta State. People are wanting to get involved in the festival. Yes, um, we talked um, some of our elite athletes that uh, are Olympic bound or fighting for a ticket for the Olympics will not be around. There have been statements and reports that they're not going But surprisingly, Mike Edwards is here around. Mr. Fume is around here. And um, also, don't forget to Peter Moreno. Peter Moreno is a record holder at the National Sports Festival. So he was the River State in the last national sports center where he won two gold. But his interview one on one chat with him says that um, he is no longer representing River State because information I'm getting is that River State government did not pay athletes for the did not reward athletes for the exploit in Abuja twenty eighteen. Mm. So we have um Ibu Femi um Olude Falekemi who is a two kilometer, 20 kilometer um, gold medalist. And she's one of the um, athletes that been winning, um, the Nigerians that been winning and the Athens Bank Bigger City Marathon. Yeah. She just told me yesterday that um, she's not representing River State because River State refused to reward all the athletes. And this will definitely affect River State. Major, no major um, um, potential gold medalists and gold medalists that giving them gold in the last edition will not be representing River State. And from the table I have here, River State has not won any medal. Before we go more down the show this morning, I want to ask a question. Now, Nigerians are confused this morning. With us, the sports festival was supposed to be a breeding ground for future talent. What are elite athletes doing there? Yeah, this, this policy will continue being a big debate all the time. Lego, yeah, Lego states are in support. Some states are in support that um, you should not bring the, the sport festival is, um, is for, to showcase talent and then um, grooming talent and all that. But the policy of the, of the sport festival, we call it our own Olympics. So if the sport festival is our own Olympics, why are we trying to why are we trying to make sure that the 
top elite athletes and elite athletes are not in the sport festival if this is our own Olympics. But the good thing is that it's not depend on the state. Like on the the state government will be told them that don't use yours to win any medal. And whatever you bring back for us, we are okay with. But that is a fight cry from what Delta State is doing. Delta State is saying, come for the gold. We are all to win the gold. One million there for the gold medal. Sure that. So the freedom to express yourself is a good one for the state. Very true. Whatever you sow, you, you are going to reap. No doubt. Whatever the policy Delta State is doing, what we know about that, don't repeat. Whatever the policy could be, regular state and other states are doing for the purpose that don't repeat. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Murashi Rushitu, as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my senior colleague, Wallace Scott. That was uh, Murashi Rushitu from Edo State. I'm um, telling us that, listen, the events are still going on in Edo. He doesn't see any sign that um, anything will shut down at 12 in Edo State. And he has a communique a separate one that says the games will go on. We're thankful for that. Now, Super Eagles closed out Afghan qualifier with two wins, scoring four goals without conceding. They are up to 32nd place in the new FIFA World Rankings table, up four places courtesy of their two wins over Benin Republic and Lesotho in the last qualifying matches for the rescheduled African Cup of Nations Cup scheduled for Cameroon in January 2022. The Eagles remain third in Africa behind Senegal and Tunisia. The Tiranga Lions moved two places down the FIFA rankings table from their former 20th position, while Tunisia remained in 26th place, though both countries will be in Cameroon next year. Uh, still top of the FIFA world ranking is Belgium, followed by France and Brazil in third place. Um, okay, um, let's look at um, UEFA Champions League now. Chelsea coach Thomas Tuchel praised his side for overcoming the shock of last week's 5-2 defeat to West Bromwich Albion as they beat Porto 2-0 in Wednesday's Champions League quarter-final first leg. Chelsea conceded more than double the amount of goals against struggling West Brom as in their previous 14 games on the Tuchel, but looked like the usual selves against Porto, winning thanks to goals from Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell. Chelsea dominated both legs of their last 16 tie against Atletico Madrid, but were on the back foot for large chunks against Porto. Porto have not made it beyond the Champions League quarterfinals since last winning the competition under Jose Mourinho in 2004, but they took the game to their opponents in their home leg of the tie, which was played in Seville due to coronavirus restrictions in Portugal. Coach Sergio Consencio underlined the huge wealth gap between the two sides, which saw Chelsea bring on some star names from the bench. He felt, however, that his side had played better than their richer opponents. We had a lot of we had a lot of good results in a row. So we had a very bad result in the first loss last Saturday, and it was the first chance to to bounce back and to show a reaction. So it was our first loss together <coughs> and the first reaction that we showed. You know, it is uh, it was a tough match because because Porto was very very strong and we suffered a bit from because uh, because I, I felt us a little bit tense and, and not precise enough and not free and not courage enough uh, during the, the first half so we made life was hard for us because Porto showed a lot of quality and uh, we we absolutely accepted that we need also a bit of luck to escape with a 2-0 two, two today and to escape with a clean sheet but after conceding, in a, in that after conceding on last Saturday and after losing such a strange game, it was the, we said today in the in the in the coaching staff the best the best situation would be to escape straight and to 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 be capable to to produce a clean sheet straight away. Overall, we 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 escaped with a very very good result, but uh, it's quarter final and uh, we have to keep on going. There's uh, it will be necessary to have another top performance and top mentality on, uh, on next Tuesday. I have always said on my different shows, and I think I'm vindicated now, when Frank Lampard brought in players for Chelsea, he brought the players in for Champions League, not for the English Premier League. And of course, I'm, I've been vindicated now. Kai Havertz, Ben Chilwell, um, Timo Werner, all Champions League players. And you can see what they're doing now. 
Now, Man United have been handed a boost ahead of Thursday's Europa League quarterfinal first leg against Granada, with forward Marcus Rashford set to travel with the team after shaking off an injury. England international Rashford, who has scored 19 goals and provided to assist in all competitions this season, sustained a knock in the 2-1 win over Brighton and Hove Albion in the Premier League and missed training on Tuesday. Rashford will be available for the trip to Spain but might not be risked for the entire match. Goalkeeper Dean Henderson, who started in place of David De Gea for a seventh straight game against Brighton, is a contention to don the gloves against Granada. And Solskjaer said he had to make a choice between the two on a game-by-game -game basis. Solskjaer also said Anthony Martial had begun his recovery after sustaining a knee injury on international duty, but it's unlikely to feature over the rest of the season. <laughs> uh, I can't um, disclose the team now, of course, we're, we're not going to do that, but uh, uh, Marcus is travelling and we've just got to make a decision uh, tomorrow if he starts or if he's uh, on the bench. He's definitely, uh, or I don't think he'll be a 90 minute man, so uh, let's, let's see uh, where he's at tomorrow. We don't, I cannot prioritise uh, league, Europa League, every game here is the most important one. The next one is the most important one. And uh, uh, every time I try to explain to players why they don't play in this, in this particular game and what they need to do and what my plans are with them. So all, that, all those discussions remain private, of course. And... Uh, David's been a top, top keeper and he's still a top, top keeper and he's, he's working, uh, working uh, to be ready when he plays and uh, uh, if it's Dean, David, I'm, I'm very comfortable with both of them uh, to play and I'm very happy that none of them are happy to uh, not play. Of course, we've analysed them ourselves and we've watched the last few games as well and it's a team full of experience, uh, unbelievable character and spirit. Uh, which you expect from teams that come up. Uh, they they got promoted in 20, summer 2018, did a great season, and uh, or was it 18, 19? Uh, great season, 19, 20, and this is the second season. Uh, and even, I think they're one of the teams in Europe that have played the most games, and uh, to do that at this level so early uh, has been impressive, and we know it's going to be a battle. Anthony has started his recovery, and... Uh, if we see him before the end of the season, I'll be very surprised. But of course, he's determined to uh, come back as quick as he can. Manchester United coach Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, Manchester City playmaker Kevin De Bruyne has signed a contract extension that will keep him at the Etihad Stadium until 2025, Premier League leaders said on Wednesday. The 29-year-old scored in Tuesday night's 2-1 um, ch Champions League quarter-final first leg win over Borussia Dortmund, meaning the club is still on track for a possible four trophies this season. They are currently 14 points clear at the top of the English Premier League, are in the League Cup final as well as the FA Cup semi-final, both later this month. The Bruyne has played 255 games in all competitions for City, scoring 65 goals and assisting 105. Kevin, congratulations on the new deal. Um, what are you feeling having signed the extension? Uh, I feel proud because um, I've been here now for six years and obviously this, is, this, is, this feels like home. It's been the, the, the longest time that I've been at the club is, is here and uh, yeah, you know, to get the extension now at my age feels also like a yeah, very proud moment because obviously it means that they trust me until I get really old in football terms. So, uh, no, I feel really happy and my, my family is also really proud. So that's really, really nice. Was it an easy decision for you? It wasn't difficult for me. Um, you know, I've been really fortunate here. When I came here, we, we had a good team and over the years, a lot of players changed, but I remained, so <laughs> that's a good thing. And we've, we've won a, a lot of trophies and, you know, the team is really good. Uh, the way that we play excites me and, you know, that, that's the way I want to go forward. So it's not difficult in the end for me. On that then, what is it specifically about City 
that makes you feel like this is the right club for you to be at at this time? Well, I think when I came here, obviously it was with big expectations, and uh, I think it exceeded every every ex ex expectations from every part. And you know, to be able to to compete at every every cup competition, every title, every Champions League, uh, every cup, you know, to be then. Do it in the right way for me. Do it in the way that we play. Uh, still, yeah, excites me. And you know, obviously, I, I wouldn't know why I would change that. They pushed me to to get to this level. You know, it's 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 not easy to compete all the time with these players, and they they're so good. But they help me in a way to perform the best that I can be. And you know, and then it's it's a mix of everything that helps me be who I am and I, I get to do what I do best and that's be on the pitch and help the teammates. Massive player Kevin De Bruyne can't forget when he played Manchester United last season and Guardiola puts um, Kuna Aguero and Jesus on the bench for 90 minutes and puts De Bruyne as a dominant and he wow. Okay, before I go, Tiger Woods, we hear that uh, his accident was caused by he was actually stepping on the accelerator and not the brakes. And he crashed. Well, too bad. That's all we can take on the show this morning. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Join us on the same time tomorrow, same station. And of course, um, get the best of sports across the world. My name is Wally Scott. Till tomorrow morning, like I was advise you at the end of every show. If not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. <laughs>